Good morning, uh, Mission Baptist. Good to see you this morning. Uh, pray that you've come to worship the Lord this morning in spirit and in truth. Um, just a few things we want to mention as we get to the Lord in prayer and open up the service this morning. Uh, just pray for our nation. Uh, I know that you've been watching the news and just all the civil unrest that's uh, going on across our country right now uh, on top of this COVID-19 and, and all of those things. Uh, it's, a, it's a very different time in the life of, uh, of families, individuals, and this uh, life of this country. And uh, we def- definitely uh, need to be praying uh, one for another. We need to pray for our leaders uh, that God will just uh, show himself and reveal himself to uh, those people that's uh, making those decisions across our country, uh, they need the guidance of God to uh, have the wisdom they need to uh, lead this country as they should. Uh, so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just remember to pray one for another. Pray for uh, the churches, uh, families. Uh, so we're just going to go in to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessings on the service this morning. Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we do come to you this morning. Uh, God, we want to honor you this morning, uh, God, in everything we do and say. Uh, God, we, we don't want to draw any attention to ourselves. Uh, we want to bring all attention and place it on Jesus, our Savior, the one that first loved us, the one that gave his life for us. Uh, God, I pray that he'll be lifted up today uh, in the service. Uh, God, we do pray for our country and uh, God, just all the civil unrest that's going on across our country and the rioting and, and all the anger and emotions that people have and, and, and wanting to vent those emotions. God, I, I pray, God, that, uh, uh, Lord, you'll be seen through all this, uh, that they'll see their need for a Savior even more. They'll see the brokenness of people. Uh, God, if we can't see anything else, we should see how broken people are. And just how sinful we are. And just how much we need a Savior. God, we need, this country needs uh, to see Jesus. They need to see a Savior on a cross. They need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, the church doesn't need to be asleep at this time. God, help us. God, help us. Help the families. Help the church, God. Get a burden. Get a desire. Just a burning desire in our hearts, God, to seek you and to share the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, church, we have a, another special song this morning. Miss Courtney's come to uh, sing for us, so I'll let her sing it this time.
Thank you for the song, Miss Courtney. Uh, we have definitely been blessed. And uh, when we look across this nation, we've been tremendously blessed. In some situations, I, I wonder if we ain't too blessed. Uh, some situations, it seems like we're, uh, we're just a little bit spoiled sometimes. God's been mighty good to us. Uh, he's been good to my family. Um, and he's uh, most certainly blessed me in, in many different ways. Uh, we were just praising for that this morning, that we have uh, have that rock, we have that strong one to go to and uh, to talk to and to uh, share. And uh, that's sort of the message this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, and I want to encourage you to get your Bible out at this time, turn to Psalms chapter, Psalms chapter 142. Uh, we're going to look at a psalm this morning. Um, there's seven verses in it, so I want you to get your Bible out and turn to uh, Psalm 142, and I'm going to share you a few thoughts while you're finding your place about this psalm. Uh, this psalm was written um, uh, while David was fleeing from King Saul, uh, fleeing for his life, in fact. Uh, Saul uh, desired to, to kill David, and Saul was, King Saul was a very powerful man. Uh, he had the resources most certainly to do that. Um, this psalm is a, a prayer. Uh, it's a prayer of David's. And uh, so this morning we keep that in mind as we, we re- read the psalm, as we look at it, uh, that it is actually it is a prayer uh, of David's to, to God. Uh, so he's, he's speaking to God. He's talking to God this morning. Uh, this psalm was wrote while he was in a cave. He was in a cave and he was actually, uh, it was not uncommon to find David in a cave uh, because he, uh, he actually had, was on the run for quite a bit and he actually hid out in caves. Uh, it was a place, to, the cave represented a place of refuge, a place you could go in and you had walls around you, a place that uh, you could feel somewhat safe. And so remember that, we'll talk about that a little bit more as uh, and uh, David actually spoke of this refuge too. And uh, so that's a, a little bit of the history. This is where David's coming from. He's coming from a place of great despair. Uh, he's coming from a place where he is fearful maybe in some sense. Uh, he feels like there's nobody uh, that can help him. Um, he feels alone. And uh, I, I'm sure uh, during this pandemic, during this time that we've been traveling through over the last few months, that, that you may have felt alone. You may have felt as if there was nobody that could help you. And um, for me, um, this was uh, uh, sort of taking a, a turn when God said to uh, go to this psalm. I, I want the title of this message this morning is "Crying Out to God." Crying out to God. I mentioned this is a prayer, and it is a prayer of David's. And um, well, we as Christians, as believers, we pray. Um, we pray. First um, Thessalonians five seventeen says us to pray without ceasing. Um, and so we pray, I hope you pray on a daily basis. We pray, you probably pray, pray multiple, some of you probably pray, pray multiple times during the day. Uh, the Bible in uh, 1 Timothy 2.11 tells us, Exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Uh, we pray for others. Uh, we, um, there's types of prayer in the Bible, uh, intercessory prayer, prayers of thanks, uh, uh, there's many different uh, prayers and types of prayers in the Bible. You say, well, I thought pray, praying was just praying. Well, you think about the things that you pray about, the things that you talk to God about. And you may be a person that you've, I've never prayed. I, I've never prayed. Uh, this prayer we're going to look at today, uh, it is a prayer. But uh, in this prayer, you're going to see David crying out to the Lord. Crying out to the Lord. And that's where, I, that's where I got the title of the message is crying out to God. I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been through life and um, you've been driving along through life 
in, in your vehicle of life, and uh, have you ever had a tire come out from under you? You ever, you ever lost a tire? Uh, it sort of slows you down. But sometimes in life, you know, I, I felt as if all four of the tires come off. <laughs> and and my, my vehicle was setting still. I wasn't moving forward. I wasn't going backwards. I was just riding along and it seemed like the wheels just come off this train. And found myself sitting still. I don't know about you, but uh, um, when a wheel comes off... It most certainly will slow you down. It will most certainly uh, stop what you're doing. I know my mother-in-law called me this week, and she lost a wheel on the lawnmower. And guess what? She didn't mow anymore. That wheel come off. And, And for us in life, there's things that can come into our lives. There's things that can happen in life that it sort of brings life to a stop. It seems like. I know things daily we're still going and doing our, our, our chores, our jobs, but, but inside, emotionally, spiritually, we can feel like, man, the tires has done come off this bus and we're at a dead still, a standstill. It could be uh, at a time when your family, you have somebody close to you and they receive some news that uh, they are very sick. Uh, it could be something of cancer. Um, it could be a type of illness that is going to require a lot of treatments. It's going to re- require for somebody to change their schedule to take care of them. And it's going to turn your world upside down. And it's going to feel like the tires has come off. You know, we think about this COVID-19. So the country's running along real well. Best economy we've ever had in the history of this nation. Everything's going good. This bus is rolling on all four wheels. Retirements are fat. People's making a lot of money. Real estate's good. Housing's good. Everything's good. There's plenty of jobs. Everything's great. The bus is rolling full blast. And one thing. One virus literally shut down the world. (laughs) The wheels come off the bus. (laughs) People found themselves sitting still. They're they're not going anywhere, physically not going anywhere. People that had been saving for years and years upon years, and they had built up that nice cushiony retirement, uh, looks at it and says, I'm not going to be able to retire. I got to keep on working. And this is real. This is literally, this is not, may not be real for you, but there's some of you knows exactly what I'm talking about. It could be health issues, financial issues. Many of you uh, are fearful. Even now, uh, you look around at our nation and, and, and you see all the civil unrest and people are rioting and they're, they're, they're burning buildings and they're stealing and, and there's fights and, and there's gang violence and people are getting shot and killed and, 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 and some says open up, some say close. There's a fear of the virus and, and all these things. And people have anxiety and stress. You know, everybody's wondering... You know, when is life going to go back to normal? When is it going to be normal? Is this the new normal? I've I've been hearing this on the news. Uh, This is the new normal. This is the way we're going to live life. You know, and and everybody's world has been turned upside down. You know, we're, we're pretty much creatures of habit and routine. And we do the same thing each day. And when these things happen, it causes anxiety in in a lot of people. That's why I ended up at Psalms 142. You know, sometimes some of our troubles, some of our troubles are actually self-inflicted. And I explain that. Uh, Some of us, uh, we can be traveling along through this Christian walk 
And even if you're a not, not a Christian, this can apply to you. If you've never accepted Jesus, you can travel through life and, and you can make decisions that, that, that God says is not good for us. We can, we can act and do contrary to the word of God and, and we can disobey God and we call that sin and we can sin against God. You know, life can be going in a direction and, and, and we choose a route that's contrary uh, to God and we allow sin to come in our life. And, uh, you know, what we end up finding out uh, eventually that the wheels comes off that bus too. And we find ourselves in the same position. Uh, sometimes uh, maybe it's brought about pain in your life. It's brought about disgrace in your life. And there's no, there's for certain that in this life, it, the Bible talks about it raining, raining on the just and the unjust. This is not a, a easy route to travel. There's going to be ups and downs and pain. You know, I can think over my Christian walk. And as I was walking, I allowed sin to come into my life. And, and that sin destroyed a lot of things and hurt a lot of people. And that's what sin is good at doing. And it, it sidetracks you as a believer. It gets you over here where, where God does not desire you to be. You get off the path that God has for you. And you find yourself in a place of hurt and pain, a place where you feel alone and you feel disgrace and you wonder, could God ever love such a person as me? For David here, his situation was not one that was caused by his sin. Uh, there's no indication in the scripture at all at this point that we're reading. Uh, David's simply running for his life. And Saul wants to kill him. You know, I want to say, uh, I, I'll tell you this. You know, we, we think about this, 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 this statement here. And I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you something that applies to both situations. We know David, he's, he, this situation is not because of sin, but some of you are sitting there and the situation that you're in is a direct result of a sinful behavior or act. And it's brought hurt and pain into your life. Sometimes we find ourselves in this place of helplessness and despair and discouragement. And at that point, what we need to do is what we're getting ready to read here. We need to cry out to God. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether it's self-inflicted and I've sinned against God. Uh, as a sinner, we need to cry out to God. But you may be a believer and, and you've been living the best life. You know how to live for God. You've been trying to serve Him. You've tried to work for Him. You've been trying to do everything. You read, you pray, you do the things God commands you to do. And you still have found yourself in a position in life of hurt and pain. And you're going through some things right now that you really don't understand at all. There may be some sickness in your life that, that, that has put you in the bed on your back. I don't know. But this statement still apply, applies to you too. At this point in time in life, one of the best things you could do is cry out to the Lord. And I'm afraid... As I look around the country, as we look on social media, all the things that I spoke of, all the, all the unrest, the civil unrest, the politicians and politics and all the fighting and, and all of that that's going on. And you know what? I have not heard from anybody. I'm not seeing a post. I'm not seeing anybody say this. Is that we need to get on our knees and cry out to the Lord for this nation and for this country and for the church. See, I don't hear that. I, all I hear is about all the wrongness being done and all the finger pointing. You know, I, I'm afraid God still don't have us where He wants us. 
at a place of humbleness and brokenness and crying out to Him. But see, there's one thing about God. He knows exactly what it'll take to get us in that position. And you know, I can look back on my life, my life that I sidetracked myself because of sin. One of the best things that ever happened to me was God got me in a place of brokenness, a place of of fear, a place of distress. I can look back now and say that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I learned more during that time than I did in most of my Christian walk about who God was and who I am. So, Psalms 142. Psalm, Psalmist David said, I, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, that, then thou knewest my path. In my way there, wherein I walked have they probably laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto the Lord and I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me uh, from my, my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise my, uh, thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Notice in verse 1 as we read the scripture there. We're just gonna, I'm just going to expound on some, good, some thoughts from this scripture. Some of the things that David did when he found himself in a place of despair, in a place of need. This is some of the things that David did. He said uh, in verse 1, he said, I cried out unto the Lord with my voice. Now see, I spoke a while ago, we pray and we pray and we talk to God. But I, I know this in my personal life. There's been times when I've got in a position where there's so much pain, there's so much hurt, there's so much discouragement that he said with my voice that I literally, I cried out to God, God help me in this, God help me, God I need you. And I cried out things to God with my voice. See, it's a little bit more than a prayer in what we're reading here. It's a cry unto the Lord. And we'll find throughout Scripture, there's times when men of God, when people of God, when, well, ladies, when they, there was times of despair and great distress, and, and they did, it was more than prayer. They cried out to God with their voice. And, and you notice, notice that which the cry was directed. The cry was directed unto the Lord. I want you to notice that, and that's very important. You say, well, that's, I understand that. No, listen. There's a lot of people crying about their situation. Across America, and I'm all for standing up for what is right. I'm not saying that at all. And it's defending what are God-given rights in this country. I understand that. But what I'm afraid that's happening time and time again is, is I hope this is what's happening behind closed doors. For all those people that's crying out on social media and crying out about the things of injustice, I hope more so that you're on your knees before God and you're crying out to God because you're so burdened for the lost people in this country. You're so burdened for our, our governor. You're so burdened for our president. That it's brought you to a place of prayer. And it's brought you on your knees. And it's brought you to a point of great despair and great distress. And you're reaching your hands up to heaven. And you're crying out to God and saying, God, oh, deliver this nation. See, there's a huge difference, church. See, that's what I'm not hearing. I, I really believe God wants to bring His people 
to a place. We're, we're, we're burdened for this, for the loss. We're burdened for our president. We're burdened for our nation. We're burdened for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we come to a place where we're crying out, not to the rest of the world. We're directing it to heaven. We're directing the cry to God. And that's what the psalmist David was doing. His cry was, it had a direction. He said, I cried in verse 1 to the Lord. Notice David, you know, remember, he was running for his life. He was in great despair. It was directed to God. So what are we saying to God, when we cry to Him, what are we saying? When we, think about this. Those of you that are parents and mother, have been parents and you've raised small children, when you hear the cry of the child, what does it mean? That child needs something. That child's in distress. That child needs somebody to attend to them. That baby can't take care of themselves. That baby needs a parent to come and take care of. And, and you pick them up and you comfort them and, and that soothe that cry. Well, when we come to God, we, we come into Him and we're crying out to Him. What are we saying to God? We're saying, God, I need you. God, I need you to rescue me in this situation. God, I need you to help me in this situation. God, I need you to give me peace in this situation. You see, we're not, when we're crying out, we're asking God, God, and He sees us down here with our hands raised, with our voices raised into heaven. And we're saying, God, help us. And all through the Word of God, you'll find God's people. When they cried out to God, God would hear their cry. And He would begin to move. Now, sometimes they would have to cry for a while. God didn't immediately rescue them every time. As a parent does a child, we hear that child, we run right then and rescue them. You know, sometimes God lets us cry a little while. David, if you read in the Psalms, you'll find that he cried out many times in a cave. We find him now running for his life. So we, we don't think they're, oh, immediate rescue. Verse 2. He said, I poured out my complaint before him. I showed, shoot before him my trouble. He poured out. You know, ain't that some sweet words? Poured out. You ever, you ever took something in a container? I could take this water here and I could pour it out and empty it out. That's exactly what he's saying here. David, he went down on his knees before God, his hands upright, his voice lifted up into heaven, and he poured out. You don't need to keep that stuff inside. See, that's the difference here. God wants us to come to him, and he wants us to pour out. You notice he said in the scripture, he poured out his complaint. He, the things that was on his heart and his mind, he come to God, he lifted up his voice, and he began to pour it out to God. See, I don't see that in the house of God. We don't see it a lot anymore around the altars. People come into the altar in prayer and pouring it out to God. And we, half the time we act like we're ashamed to come to the altar and pray. To pour it out to God. When God deals with our heart, and we're, we'll fight it in the service. And so, instead of coming to God and, and knowing your heart's burdened down, knowing you're going through something that you can't handle, you, and we'll resist coming to pour it out to God. We do it now living in our house on a daily basis. We'll say, I can handle it, and we're going on about our business. And when we should get down on our knees and raise our voices up to God and pour it out to Him. This is what David did. Verse 3. He said, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. I don't know if you ever felt overwhelmed. David felt overwhelmed. That's the word he used. I don't know if you ever felt, you feel overwhelmed right now. See, there's people right now, everybody, ain't being, everybody can't pay their bills. Everybody can't buy their groceries. Everybody don't have a job. You know, everybody's not was not within a year of retirement, and now they're having to think about this thing. I, I, I may not have that money to retire in a year. 
See, there's so many varying situations out there. And people are feeling overwhelmed. I'll be honest with you, church, uh, over the last few weeks at the house, there's been times when I felt overwhelmed with things. You know, uh, and, and it's, it's human. Uh, we, we, we are fragile people, actually. And, and, you know, we talk about this being overwhelmed, and sometimes we throw that term, but I'm talking about this where you feel so overwhelmed, you feel like you're in over your head. You feel like you're to the point where I just can't take any more that I'm going to bust. I I don't know what to do. That's what I mean, that overwhelmed. There's people that's overwhelmed right now with depression. There's people that's overwhelmed with anxiety. They're they're completely overwhelmed by it. I mean, they're overtaken by it. They feel like they're at a breaking point in life. And we see people on a daily basis, we see people that are at that breaking point and then they break. And usually there's a life that's lost. Usually somebody gets hurt, overwhelmed. David said, he said, I'm overwhelmed in verse 3. But look what he said in verse 3 also. He said, but... Then thou knowest my path. What was he saying there? He said, God, I feel, man, my spirit was overwhelmed within me. But God, with that voice uh, upraised, God, God, but you know my path. You already know the direction I'm headed. You already know the next foot step I'm going to take. God knows your path. God already knows what happened. It's going to happen. I think one of the greatest things about being a believer for me is that, that on a daily basis I, I can get up. And, and when I come to realize this as I'm thinking about this, God, you already know what's going to happen today. God, you already know what's going to happen tomorrow. God, you already know my future God, you know my paths, is what the psalmist says, David. You already know what's going to happen, God. You are the God that's in control of all these things. God, don't think for a minute that anything that's going on in this nation today that God does not have control over. God, let me reassure you, God is in full of control of what's going on in this nation and around this world. He holds it in the palm of His hand. God, God, all he had to do was speak a word. He spoke a word. He spoke another word. And we have this earth simply by the word of God. God knows your path. It's important for you to know that. And it's important for you to believe and trust that God knows your path. David did. Verse 3. Thou knowest my path. Verse 4. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. (laughs) There's no man. What is David saying? There's no man that cared. This is actually a military. This is actually a military thing. So, you have soldiers in David's time, and they would line up side by side. You'd have one soldier... To your right, you'd have a soldier to your left, but you usually held your weapon in your right hand. You held a shield over in your left hand. Over in your left hand. The person on your left, of course, they liked that shield being there. It was was a protection for them. And, And to my right, I've got another guy over here, and guess what he's got? He's got his shield up. And it's protecting my side that's open. Huh. David said... I looked, there's no man. There's nobody. There's no shields. There's nobody around. There's no protection. I tell you what, in life, and for me, for me, I've come to points in my life and I felt like there's nobody. There's nobody can help me. And, 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 in, and in the situations where 
I created the problem myself because of my own sin. I, I felt like there's nobody that wants to help me because I've done hurt all of them. I've all, already turned them all against me because of my sin. There's no man is what David said. In David's situation, he looked around. There was no man to help him. Now remember, his wasn't, he's running for his life. It wasn't because of his sin. And there's many of you that you are hurting, you've you, you got anxiety, you've got stress, you've got all those things we've just discussed about, and you're looking around and you're saying, there's not one person from the church been down here. There's nobody. There's nobody at work that wants to help me. There's nobody at work that cares. There's nobody down at the church house that cares. My neighbor don't care. My cousin don't care. There's nobody that cares. David says, there's no man. What's David saying? It's just me and you, God. There's times in life that we get to this point where we're crying out to God. We're in despair. And there is no man. It's just me and God. And that's the way God wanted it to be. He wanted it just to be us. And He wanted me crying out to Him. Those are tough times in life, church. But I'm telling you, we'll get in positions like that. And we've got to get to that position sometimes to get to the next step God wants us at in life. We've got to go through these things. David said, there's no man. There's no man. So what do we, what do, we do? What do we do when, a, when these problems come, they continue? Uh, David began to talk about a refuge. Uh, he said, there's no man that would know me. He said, my refuge failed me. What refuge? The cave. Uh, you know, the world. A lot of times we seek refuge in this world. He's seeking refuge in that cave. And, and he realized even the refuge of the cave, that the cave provided was not enough. And what you're going to find out is you keep going to the world looking for refuge. You keep going to a bottle looking for refuge. You keep going to those things that the world has to offer to offer some temporary peace or a temporary relief for your situation. You're looking for a refuge. And David said, there's no refuge here in this world. And that's true, church. There is no refuge in this world. David, he knew that. He said, there's no, there's no refuge. There's no place I can find peace. So what did, he, what did he do? Verse 5, he said, I cried unto the Lord. And I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. So David, he realized that the refuge, there was no refuge here on earth. But David realized in verse 5, look at that. He said, I cried unto thee, O Lord. And I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. And I'm telling you, church, and I'm telling you, if you're out there listening today, and you're listening to this message, and you're seeking refuge in this world, you will not find the relief, the peace, or the refuge that you're looking for in this world. At best, it will be temporary. And then it'll be gone. And then you'll find yourself in the same position again. You may be that person out there, and you've you're, you're got a drug issue. You have an alcohol issue. And you keep going back to that. And you, and you find that, that it brings a temporary peace for a day. And then it's fleeting. And then you find yourself back in the same position again. David realized that he was in a place where he needed rescue. Nobody in the world was going to rescue. There was no help here in this world. But then he looked into heaven and he said, God, you are my refuge. In church, that's where you'll find your refuge. You'll find your refuge here in the Word of God. When you open it up and begin to read the words of, of, of God, you'll find peace and you'll find comfort. You'll find security because it's inspired by God. It's given to us by God. And, and we'll go to that place of prayer. And when we begin to cry out, God will hear those prayers. And we'll find our refuge in Him. He went on to say in verse 6, he said, attend unto my cry. He said, hear my cry, God. I don't know about you, but there's been times 
And I said, Oh God, do you hear me? God, do you hear me? And if you're in a situation because of sin, the one thing we have to do is take care of that sin. We have to confess it. We have to confess it, repent of it, turn away from it, and turn to God. God, do you hear me? Do you hear my cry, David said. He said, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Deliver me. Deliver me. Rescue me. God, protect me. That's what David's saying. I don't understand. You may not know this. David, he's supposed to be a king. He's already been anointed to be the king. And I'm sure he's thinking, and just like we do in life sometimes, uh, we think, why am I in this position that I'm in right now? Shouldn't I be so-and-so? Shouldn't I be at this place in life? Uh, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have this job. I shouldn't have this family. I shouldn't have, I'm supposed to have a nice house. I'm supposed to be further along than this. We get to thinking about those things. David was supposed to be king. He's supposed to be fleeing and in a dirty cave, hiding uh, for his life. I mean, I don't know, he, our scripture doesn't tell that, but I, he's human. I wonder, he probably thought about that. He said into the, here, he said, deliver me from my per- persecutors. And notice what he said, they are stronger than I. David's a warrior. We're talking about the man that killed a bear and a lion and Goliath. He knows how to fight. He said, he told, he asked God, deliver me. They're stronger than I. And see, this is the biggest lie that we believe uh, from the devil on a daily basis. You can handle this. No problem. You got this. You can handle this on your own. You don't need nobody. And us guys, we're one of the worst ones. We're worse. We're terrible about that. We think we can do anything. I know, that's me. I've had to learn that lesson the hard way time and time again and had to say, I can't do this. I've had to say, listen, I can't do this like I used to do this. I am not that age anymore. I can't go and run like that all day long. I had to realize that. But in this situation, we've got to realize that there's some financial things that's going to come in your life. There's some job situations going to come in your life. There's, there's some things that's going to happen. Sickness is going to come your way. Death is going to come into your, to your way. And it's going to pass by your house. And, and you're going to realize that it's stronger than you are. You can't handle those things on your own. You can't cope with them. You can't deal with them. David realized that he couldn't handle this situation. He said to God, God, I need your help because they're stronger than I am. I can't do this is what David was saying. I can't win. We as believers, you as a lost person, you've got to come to the point where we fall on our knees before God. We cry out to God and say, I can't do this anymore, God. God wants you to do that. He wants you to pour yourself out to Him. He don't want us to keep it inside and be self-sufficient like the world is teaching you that you can do anything. You can't do anything. You've got to have God on your side. I don't care what self-help tells you. I don't care what psychology tells you. The Word of God says that you're human, you're fragile, and there's things that's going to come into your life that you cannot handle by yourself. And I found that out myself. I found myself broken and and alone and nobody around. And I realized that I didn't have the bull by the horns. I didn't have this world under my feet. That I needed God. And I pray that you get to that point today. If you're struggling with addiction and that old devil keeps coming back time and time again, we've got to realize that we can't not do this by ourselves. We've got to have God and not every other day. We have to have God every single day in our life. 
See, this, Satan tells us these lies all the time. You can do this. You don't need anybody else. You are your own man. He's just setting you up for a fall. That's all he's doing is setting you up for a fall. David, King David, the bear, lion killing, giant killing man, realized there's something out there stronger than he is. Verse 7, our last verse. He said, bring my soul out of this prison. Bring it out of this prison. Bring my soul out of this circumstance. He, he felt like he was in some type of, of prison. He said that I, I may praise thy name. He's looking forward. He's looking, he sees a glimmer of hope. I think he's, got, I think he's beginning to think, you know, hey, God's my rescuer. God hears my cry. God's always there for me. And he starts looking for that day, you know, and he, he begins to praise him and praise God. And he talks about a day that the righteous will compass about him. For thou shalt deal bountifully with me. See, you see the confidence that David had in God, knowing at the end of the end in verse 7, he said, you'll deal bountifully with me, God. I know that you'll be gracious to me. I know that you'll be giving to me. That's the kind of God that you are. But why? Because God loves His children. And now, how much more He wants to give you good gifts? How much more does He want to love on you? And when you're talking about the riches of this world, there's a whole lot more to life than this. Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We're going to go through sufferings in this life. And church, what I want to encourage you to do is to cry out to God. Quit, quit, stop looking at all these situations that's going on around you. Focus on Him. At Mission Baptist, we, we, I talk a lot about focus. Focus. And focusing on, on Him. Focus. Because my focus gets over here, and it gets over here, and it gets over here. And I, I get looking at this, and I get my eyes off Him. I, I'm not crying out to him. I'm not praying to him. I'm not reading his word. I'm focused on all these other things. As a believer, let me talk to you for just a minute. If the circumstances that you're in right now is like David's, and, and, and you realize there's something stronger than you, are, than you are, you realize this. What should I do, preacher? You cry out. Cry out to God. God wants His people to cry out to Him. God wants the church. See, I don't see this. Think about this, church. Seriously, think about this this morning. How much of the church is crying out to God? We can't even meet in our God's house like a normal situation anymore. Is anybody crying out? Maybe uh, your life's good right now. You say, well, I ain't got no problem. Everything's good. Let me ask you this. Are you crying out for the lost? Are you crying out for, for the nation? See, we as believers, these things that we see around us, we keep getting numb to this and we don't really, it doesn't affect us when people are killed and shot and, and it shouldn't be that way. This should, it should break our hearts. Sin should affect us. We should, when we see broken lives and broken people, it should break us down to our knees to pray and cry out on their behalf. On their behalf. You're supposed to be an intercessor for for others. You're supposed to be an advocate for others. And if you're here and you're listening today and you're lost, man, you need to turn to God with your whole heart. And you need to cry out with God. God save me, I'm a sinner. God save me, I'm a sinner. God, I need you. 
And, and you need to repent of your sins. You need to turn to Jesus in faith believing that Jesus died on the cross, that He arose on that third day, and that He ascended up into heaven, and He's sitting there listening to you. And He hears your cry. He hears your prayer of repentance. I want to turn to you and make you Savior and Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be Lord of my life. God, I need you. This is God, this is God drawing you to Him. And that's what He does. He draws us to Him. We can't do nothing. We're simple people. We can't do anything. It's all God. Crying out to God. I pray that uh, you know Him this morning. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. If I can help you in any way, you can find my email, a phone number on missionbaptistnc.net. If you want to listen to any of our other messages, uh, you can subscribe on YouTube, Mission Baptist High Point, North Carolina. And uh, you see the week, my messages posted weekly. Don't hesitate to send me an email. Don't hesitate to call me if you need me. And I'm going to pray for you at this time. Let's pray. The kind of grace is Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, that we have a Father in Heaven. That when we cry out to Him, You hear us. God, I can't make it through this world without you. And God, I I can't make it through the things that I have to experience in this life without you. I pray for the ones listening, God. They'll turn to you, God. And they'll cry out to you, God, in whatever situation they're in. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. See you on Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you, church.